Praise the Lord. Uh, let's show the uh, slide of the spirit, soul, and body. We show uh, both. We continue uh, the message that we have this morning. Where we talk about 2 Corinthians 12, that uh, we are in the season of powers that it should come. To perfect the power of God in our life, we must discover our own weakness. And uh, you'd be surprised, sometimes it takes time to discover your weakness. Uh, if you're a man or woman who uh, does not know your own weakness yet, you can never reach your full potential. Isn't it surprising? You cannot reach your full potential if you don't discover your weakness. And yet, when you discover your weakness, you must also discover the second key, waiting on God. Which is, I have shown uh, the Hebrew word, uh, is kwavah, from the word wait. Uh, and it's been translated in Genesis 1 verse 9 as to be gathered together or to be bound together. Uh, and, uh, so we need to know how to uh, be strong in the Lord. And my illustration is how that uh, I took a rope from here. Let me do it again. Already. Okay. They actually wrap this very well. Wow, double wrapping. It used to be single. And I guess it's to help. And, uh, sorry ladies, I'm messing it up. And, uh, so, you know that this is uh, uh, made from little threads and the threads is bound into, this is like a two cord thing and they turn it around. And it is strong. By itself, this single thread, I mean, I possibly can break this. But there's no way I can break this. Because these threads have been bound together. And uh, then when you look at the metal, a metal like this can be strong, but it's not as strong as tiny little strands of metal made into a steel cable, which is why most suspension bridges, they don't use solid metal. I mean, there are bridges that are just solid metal, but suspension bridges, they need a steel cable. And steel cables are made of tiny little, little wires like thread, and then they roll it together. Because for some reason, when it's individual tracks and it's rolled together, the same equivalent mass is many, many times stronger than the normal metal. Just the rearrangement of how we do it. It's just a re 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 rearranging atoms. But we don't have that power to reach small little atoms there. So we rearrange it on a bigger scale, yet it makes such a difference. Uh, now, so we need to learn how to be weak so that we individual traits and then the Lord adds His character into our life, and then we are bound together in Him. I'll look at the Hebrew word afterwards. But here's is it. And uh, we have spirit, soul, and body. Uh, we saw the difference what we're doing. We're doing this on Thursday Bible study. We're taking a break for two weeks because we are in Pergamos. Uh, now let's look at the other uh, thing. Yes, spirit, soul, and body also. And the other chart. Yes. Uh, okay, so our spirit is like the Holy of Holies, then our soul is like the holy place and in the outer court. But in the, in the uh, dimension of the heavenly man, this is a spiritual man, heavenly man, inside is actually new heaven glory, our spirit. Our soul becomes the Holy of Holies and our body becomes a, the holy place. And outside everything else is the outer court. So there's a higher level of improvement in that. So you know there's spirit, soul and body. Right. So okay, we take away the chart. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, then let's see if I can get this up for you to see my uh, laptop. Yeah, they get ready on that. I know how to do this now. Mirroring. Okay. And start here. Okay, turning it on. <coughs> yes, we got it on screen. And um, we have, when you look at Isaiah, I got it bigger now, right? Hey, hey, how come you haven't changed yet? Oh, there's a time delay. Okay. It's just like I was preaching for Pergamos. There's a time delay. I'm preaching from Sydney. Do you know when I preached from Sydney, I think there was a 30 second delay or something. And so every time I tell a joke, uh, there's silence. And then 
I'm still preaching, and then you guys are laughing. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's Isaiah chapter 40. And um, we are right towards the end. Chapter, verse 30. I think it's bigger, right? You need it bigger? Anyone? Maybe bigger? Bigger will help? This is okay? I can make it bigger a bit, but it's a little bit big on my screen, but I can adjust it back. Let's do it a little bit bigger for you. How about that? Oh, that's good. Better? Alright. Now, you can see there that those who wait on the Lord, the word wait hard, this is also big enough, right? You can see the Hebrew word there. Can you see the spell kova? And uh, actually, there's another way to spell it. The old, old romanization was Q-A-V-A-H. And that's why some of you, when you're having new names or all that, you wanted uh, a new name for the Hebrew and the Greek, there are many ways to romanize it. Uh, it's not just one way. Uh, and so there you have uh, Quava, Q A V A H or Q A W A. This is a new type of spelling. Uh, it was not there before. All my books is Q A V A H. Uh, and uh, then when you look at the usage of Quava, this is how you use that. And uh, you can't see that, that's too small, but I punch this so that you can see. They give you many verses. So this one is the first one in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 and that's the word together I punch it and you see the word also is the same Kwa-wa. but they translated it as um, gather together what a difference isn't it wait on the Lord gather together uh, the two has totally uh, different meanings uh, many other verses uh, some are translated exactly Genesis 49 verse 18 as wait and um, then the name of a place uh, is mentioned. And um, then sometimes even the word look, like here in Job 3 verse 9. Now I can show you. So you can be a participant. Can you see the word look here? Uh, and let me punch it. See, it's Kuala. What a funny translation. They never get consistency. Uh, so Kuala is uh, may it gather together for life. May it bind together for life. That's a root meaning that is there. See, there are many other uh, various translations how they struggle to translate. And uh, here's where we in Job 36 uh, verse 19, they translate Kwava as hope. Uh, the caravans of Tima look the travelers of Sheba hope for them. What do you mean hope? That's not a good translation. It's as you can see, the same word H6960, which is uh, Kwava. And so how can the word be hope? You can see that to bind together is all of those things. It is gathered together, it is weighed, it is bound together, it is trying, and uh, it includes a type of hope uh, that is there. Let's look at some more verses now that you're a participant in this. And um, some more places where hope, look, and uh, I translated look here in Job. Let's get out of Job. And um, uh, there are many places where I translate wait. In fact, in Psalms, I find one, two, three, four, five. All translated wait. But some more here uh, six, seven, uh, eight, nine. All translated wait. And all is from the word kwa Like here in Psalms 27, verse 14. When you punch it, and uh, same word kwa so those who bind together with the Lord, uh, wait on the Lord, or be bound together with the Lord, uh, and be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. And He says, uh, be bound together, I say, on the Lord. And so David did understand a little bit of this uh, meaning of the word uh, kwava. Uh, and, uh, so it's been translated all those uh, different places, any other special translation. Isaiah 5 verse 2, translate it as expectation. There you get it here. Yeah? See the word in uh, Isaiah. And, uh, this is Isaiah chapter 5 verse 2. So he expected it to bring good grapes and he brought uh, four wild grapes. And here is the word kwapa, expectation, expectancy. Uh, it's been translated. It looks like the translators of the Bible just don't know how to convey this powerful uh, 
Hebrew word kwava, and they try to bring it uh, to our understanding of uh, its full meaning. But uh, the word kwava, let me point it again at the um, here under the explanation of some meaning. You can see that, I can see clearly, a kwava, a primitive root to bind together. That's the full meaning. But behind it is also a twisting together. It's like uh, the actual word kuawa is uh, kuwa, is to be entwined together. Uh, so that your strength is no more your strength. It comes from the strength of whatever you entwine with. And you see some creepers uh, in a natural world, you see some plants are creepers. And they can entwine themselves until they can be as high as any tree that they, that they create upon. By themselves, they cannot climb, they cannot be that high. But when they latch themselves on the tall tree, they can go as high as they want, depending on what they're climbing onto. In the same way, when we discover our weakness, uh, we are able to discover our strength. Because unless you're moldable and pliable, then the Lord cannot take you and join him to himself and twine together with the Lord. Uh, no. Then we look to John chapter 15 to see the word uh, to be one with the Lord. In other words, uh, to be one with the Lord could be a very good conveying of the word. It ties to signs and wonder. Jesus says that the works that I do is not I who do, but my Father who does it in me. And uh, then he turns around implying that the works that we do, we do because Jesus is in us. We need to be in this oneness with Jesus. It has to flow through our spirit. And we all know we have spirit, soul and body. And uh, so let me ask some very simple questions. Uh, now, the first question is, that is, you have a, you, you, there is spirit, soul and body. Which one is the real you? Simple, very simple question. You should be able to answer. So, spirit. Decide which one you want. Spirit. Is your spirit your real person or your soul your real person? Soul. Spirit. Yeah, you may say, okay, let's see the majority. How many of you say that the spirit? Is your real person? Okay, quite a lot of hands. Thank you. How many say your soul is your real person? See, quite some hands too. How many say that your body is a real person? No hands. Okay. Not bad. At least you got rid of the soul, uh, the body. Spirit or soul is your real person. And uh, now, to help you understand that. I ask another sub question to help you get to the answer. Who is your new man? Uh, who is the hidden man? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hidden man is hidden. Is a spirit. And uh, so, when you were born again, which part of you was born again? Your spirit. Would you agree that your spirit is the most important part of your being? Okay. Now, when you were born again, are any one of your souls born again? No, right? But yet your soul can change because of your spirit. And when God first created us before we came to the earth, are we spirits? We are spirit. That was your real you. So your real you, you see, by analogy, it can, can, can come down to the end process. Your real you is your spirit. Your soul is part of the development and gathering. Remember what I saw your soul is? It's just a data center. Now your data center does change who you are. Because as you gather more data, you have more knowledge of the area. You can specialize in the area. Uh, your real you is your spirit. Your, your body is a house. And uh, so, looking at that area, let me try this program and see. And if this works, we can get rid of the whiteboard and then push it to the Sunday school, and uh, which we should be studying soon. And, okay, what's this? Okay. 
then I didn't anticipate. I didn't anticipate the, the advertising. Okay, sorry about that. Come on, don't give me the advertising. Uh, there's an escape button. Okay. Okay, where's the skip ad? Skip the ad. I'm punching all over the corner. Skip the ad. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's a drawing program that works very well. Uh, no, no way. <laughs> we got. We have to end at four o'clock. Okay. Uh, the skip will appear. Let me see what is the end. I think I must get the real program. See, I'm gonna pay for this program. Ah, the extend the room. That's not a picture. And um, then in between is your soul. What exactly is your soul? Remember God says that uh, He will kata uh, risoes, kataros, uh, katarios, remember the rest of the pure in heart we saw this morning, uh, katarizo. And he will cleanse us. Obviously, the cleansing is in a different dimension. It has to be cleaning of your soul. You know why it cannot be cleaning of your spirit? Your spirit should be born again. Why should you do cleaning that? It cannot be cleaning of the body, otherwise it's so easy to be safe. Anybody who bathe is safe. So obviously, katarizo or cleaning, or being pure in heart. Uh, Matthew 5 verse 8. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5. He that's, that's, says that's, it says that my word has made you clean. It has to be a cleaning of this dimension here. The soul. So the cleaning process is actually on the soul. What is the soul? You have ag we have agreed. Your real person is your spirit. Your spirit there. Body is just your house. <coughs> what exactly is your soul? Is your soul a house? Is your soul a part of you? Who is your soul? <coughs> Ask yourself, who is your soul? Oh, he has gone down the diagram. Okay. I try to fix that afterwards. <coughs> so the question is. Who is your soul? Question mark. Question mark. With my rubber. Who oh, is a rubber? Yeah, got a rubber here. Yeah. So who is your soul? Uh, you're supposed to answer that question. Thank you very much. <laughs> who is your soul? Let me give you the answer. Just this thing. <laughs> Sorry, eh? So is your personality. 
Hmm. If so is your personality, then so is your real you. So it's part of us. <coughs> okay. So are we saying that we got two real person? There is a spirit and a soul. So when I say, who is the you got spirit and body? Who is the real you? Then your answer would be both my spirit and soul. Spirit is a real you. Then who is the soul? Okay, good. Okay, good. Anybody else? Yes, Sam? The soul makes us different from everyone else. Makes you unique. Makes you unique, that's true. But is that your real you? So like, like uh, for example, uh, if your body is your soul and your clothing is your is your body, then if you wear a unique shirt, then uh, you do look unique. So is the physical emotional realm, emotional realm, yeah, spirit, uh, intellect, emotion, uh, intellect, emotion, and will. Okay, we're going back to the circle. Yes, Sonia. <laughs> Free will of man represents our choices that we make. Uh, I remember my diagram. Does your spirit have an intellect? The spirit has a will. Yes. Yes. Spirit is emotion. Yes. Yes. And then your soul also has it. So who is your soul? The soul oh yes. The soul is the earthly realm of the spirit. <laughs> 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 That's quite clever. Thing. Soul is the early realm of the spirit. No, it's not bad. You're close to the answer. Soul is actually part of your spirit, but the soul can be influenced by the earthly, earthly part of. Okay, that goes a bit far to say the soul is part of the spirit. <laughs> huh? It is part of you. It is, it is part of us, but yet not part of us. No, soul is like an extension, but it is. <laughs> extension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. There is something there. There is something there that what Siu Fong is saying. But you you notice that we know the parts of the soul. We know the parts of the spirit. We know our physical body. Of course, you can study biology. But how do we relate all together when we talk about? We know that the cleansing is here. Cleansing is in this process here. Yeah. So the cleansing, oops, I got still my rubber. Where is my pen again? So this is the important part. The cleansing actually happens in the soul. Now here is the word that I struggle to find and finally found one word to describe what the soul actually is. The soul is actually the interface between the spirit and the body. The only way you could interface the physical realm is through the soul. Which is close to what Siu Fong was saying. It's an extension. That is why the soul has to be similar to the spirit, correct? When I put on a glove, I, I got five fingers, because this is normal hands, right? Uh, if I put on a glove with four fingers, I will struggle. It's not a good interface. And if I make a glove with six fingers, then one of it doesn't, it's not working. So for my finger to interface through the glove, let's say if it's something toxic that I need to touch, or like the outer space, I need a protection layer, then the interface needs to be as closely matched as my real hand. Correct. A glove is not our real hand. But the interface is important. And if you live in a certain environment, the interface is important. And uh, there is a spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. And, uh, but spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication goes directly into God. 
is all the knowledge comes from God. Then you have soul to soul communication. Uh, it can be directed from the spirit. Then it's a different dimension. When two astronauts go into outer space, wear their space suits and shake hands, they are interfacing in outer space. Of course, when they get back into the space station, they take off their uh, space suit and they wear normal clothes, then they shake normal hand. It's a, it's a different interface. So the soul is like your interface. The interface. Your spirit man is a real man. Your soul is the interface between the two. What happens if your interface is broken? You lose some parts. Okay? Your phone... Oh, I kept my phone today. It's charging because we need it tonight. <laughs> Alright, okay. Your phone... And uh, yes, I can use your phone as an illustration. Your phone is an interface. It's an interface when I need to connect to someone who is not... Uh, we didn't reach. It can interface with someone in another country. It can interface with someone in another suburb, in another uh, town center, or in uh, or at a distance, or in another room. But to interface, the person needs the same interface. So the person has a phone. I have a phone. Through the phone, we interface, and it is like we are talking. Of course. The phone carries audio signals that pass on to electrical signals and uh, into, uh, into electromagnetic signal. Nowadays, you can also interface through video on the phone. If your phone has internet or it has this uh, thing, if they got the same program, similar program, then you can interface. And uh, so now sometimes, sometimes they cross interface like. Skype can interface with normal phone through audio. But because your normal phone doesn't have video, so the Skype minimizes the interfaces, removes the video, and just sends the audio signal. Uh, and then some programs can interface with one another. Like I believe Apple has its own program, and uh, that program connects to the other program, and it can interface, what do they call it? Voice something, or face mail, or whatever that was. And the interfaces, and you can see each other. You can see, you can talk. And uh, in real time, we have a delay transmission. Uh, now, if one of the interface breaks down, then you're limited. You might see but cannot hear. You might hear but cannot see. So suddenly, you're blind on one area. Or you're deaf in one area. Because your interface breaks down. So the phone is like an interface. Thank you very much. And uh, we all. So the soul is like your interface between the spirit and the body realm, and also between your body and your spirit. Hey, that arrow went very nice. Still learning this program. I didn't ask for those other arrows. Okay. Uh, do a different color one. Interface and ah, uh, oh, I know what to do now. Interface here, hold it down. Okay, so it interface back into the spring. Now God interfaces only with your spirit. So I do God here. God interface with your spirit. And you interface back with God. The only way, because God is spirit, you can only connect Him through the spirit. It is obvious that if uh, something wrong goes wrong in this interface, it's going to affect your connection to God. And also the spiritual, let me give a different color, the spiritual connection that tries to come down to interface into your body. Ah, no, no. If I draw a straight line, it becomes an arrow. And uh, so your, 
your spirit needs to interface through your soul. Can you see that your interface is important? Uh, anyone you experience when you go for a walk or you go into a jungle somewhere, you go for a hike and that place got no signal, suddenly you're back to the slow age. Your only communication, Hello, everybody there! Say your own interface. Yeah, physical to physical, trying to physical to physical, trying to interface. And, uh, but with uh, another electronic interface, you can call for uh, something and you can reach another level. So the soul is an interface. The key is is important to make the soul uh, is important to make this soul here into an area where it's as clean as possible in order for the interface to work. This is where Jesus concentrates and says, I have made you clean. And uh, so Jesus' emphasis is to make our soul clean. Now let's look at uh, uh, another page. So here's our, our soul. Oops. Ah, there I am. And uh, here's our soul. And uh, okay, it's not a very good drawing. Our soul. Our soul needs to be cleansed. It might be filled with different, different things and all kinds of rubbish inside that God needs to remove. So when Jesus says, I have made you clean, the instrument that Jesus used is... Um, The Word. The Word of God. And uh, so the Word of God is our main key here. Oops. <coughs> well, they cannot put the two together. So the Word is the key by which. We can renew ourselves and change and transform. The key word is the word clean. Clean. What does it mean? Everything has to do with this interface. For too long, this interface has been clock up, block up, and Satan attacks through the body. Satan attacks the interface. It attacks the soul. Now here's a scripture that's important, and uh, we have to look at this scripture here on um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Therefore having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse. See the word cleanse? Katarizo. Again, same word. It means to purify. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. Now we heard about perfecting power. But for power to work, you must have holiness. Perfect holiness, perfect power flows together. So it says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And uh, if you want to level, look at the word, quick word, uh, filthiness. It's uh, from the Greek word, molismos. The Greek don't have much. See, this is the only verse where molismos occur. However, the Old Testament has a law to teach us about what it means 
to be clean. Because in the Old Testament, there are two types of law. There's a law of holiness, and I have a whole series teaching on holiness. In fact, it's almost ready to become a book. <laughs> you finish it, send it to me, I say going through it, and you're working on the next series. And uh, on spiritual man, Sonia is working on that. And uh, there's a series of holiness, but we never teach a series on what it means to be clean. The clean and unclean animals in the Old Testament were very important to the New Testament, Old Testament concept. If they break one of the clean and unclean law, they are also an abomination. They are also shut up from the covenant of God. The Old Testament, the word holiness is the word uh, kodesh. But the word for clean, like clean animals, is the Hebrew word tahor. Tahor. And it's the same Hebrew word that you use of clean and unclean animals. And uh, how does the clean and unclean animals bring it to the New Testament? It's a question. Because the New Testament is only one word there. Saint Corinthians was one: cleanliness uh, to watch against uncleanness. What can cause us? You wonder. See, looking at the words again, and. Uh, what can cause us to be filthy in flesh? We know, sucks is a word uh, for body or meat. And spirit is the word pneuma, which is a normal word for spirit. What can cause, what needs to cleanse us of this spiritual dimension of fear that is there? How does the clean and unclean animals bring us into this? dimension that is there. And we interpret the clean animals, we know one thing. In the Old Testament law, even the normal human process also can be unclean. Remember, dead person touch also unclean. And the uncleanness looks like physical. It's almost like physical hygiene that God was expounding. Because in the Old Testament, everything was outward. In the body dimension, that Jesus was waiting for to bring it into the new dimension of the New Testament. Now, in the New Testament, you have this um, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, wrong scripture there, actually, it's Acts chapter 10. Let me go straight to Acts chapter 10. And uh, Acts chapter 10, uh, when Peter was praying, in the vision, he saw the clean and unclean animals come down. And this scripture now applies to the New Testament. Because in verse 14, see when you highlight what this was here. Okay, I, I don't highlight my Bible, but there's a way to highlight. I forgot how to do that, otherwise it's too big to highlight. Okay, that's not my way one. <laughs> okay, uh, verse 14, Peter said, Not so, Lord. The, the voice said, Rise, kill, and eat. Peter says, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything common, which is the word kainos, which is a normal word for common. But here's the word unclean. Akatathos, which refers to the clean, unclean of the Old Testament. is brought into the Greek form. In other words, this is an unclean animal. Taho. I cannot eat it. He's a Jew. Uh, then God made this statement. What God has katarizo. See the word katarizo? Same word. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. And this was done three times. So in the New Testament, cleanliness is in the soul. The physical doesn't do much. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Jesus goes as to say that it's not what comes out of your mouth, uh, what what you what goes into you that produces you. It's what comes out from you that produces you. And uh, so, what does Jesus mean by this clean? and uh, unclean dimension and uh, 
we go to the scripture of John and we get an example. When Jesus was cleaning his disciples, he says, he was that Jesus said to him, uh, when he wanted to wash them and clean their feet, uh, let's start from um, verse uh, 5. And he poured out water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with towel, with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And he found it uncomfortable. And then Jesus says, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Simon Peter says, Wow, well, Lord, in that case, you know, my hands, my hands. My head, my whole body, yeah, I'm yours. <laughs> He's a funny guy. <laughs> okay, what was Peter's weakness? Just a sideline. Okay? Hasty. Hasty with mouth and action. Hasty with mouth and action. But when everyone, whatever your weakness, you must come to the same point. Humble. When you discover your weakness, you discover you're nothing in yourself, you're horrible. That's when God can start using you. So don't complain the next time God tries to show you your weakness. Or even when God has used you greatly, then God shows you your weakness again. And to keep you humble, to show you that only in weakness can you find His strength. Uh, sometimes we forget that when you have borne fruit, it's not you, it was Him in you. <coughs> However, if you learn the lesson well, you never forget for the rest of your life, every moment, every day of your life, that it is Him in you. Then, the lessons don't need to be given. Because it's now a part of your character. Like Jesus and the Father. In the Father. The Father in Him. Now, Jesus says, what do you now do not understand? And um, uh, Peter, of course, says, hey, no, no, not my feet only, my hands, my head. This guy want Jesus to shampoo his head. Ah, Jesus might as well start it for him. Oh, this, this Peter is a strange guy. And um, verse 10, Jesus said, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet. Thank you very much. Uh, Jesus did accept his offer. Uh, but it's completely clean. And then he suddenly used the word clean to refer not to the physical. See, from the physical, he keeps jumping to and fro into the soul dimension. And you are clean, but not all of you. And he was referring to Judas. And he was not talking physically. Because if he is talking physically, it means that you can recognize Judas from a smile away. Stinker. No, 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 no. Judas was a well-dressed person, actually. Uh, in fact, maybe other disciples who could more, could be, have more body odor than him. Uh, but there was something not right with him. His soul had become unclean. Now we are talking about the area of uh, waiting on God and the binding in God. The only way that God can take your soul and what we call, what is the witness that He's requiring? Remember your spirit and your soul? For your soul and your body to inter, your soul and spirit to interface properly, your soul must surrender. Your soul must surrender. If your soul demands itself and keeps its right, there's no way it can bend. Imagine wearing a stiff glove. You can fit your fingers into it, but cannot move. Because for the glove to work properly, the glove must be pliable. So that when my finger moves, the glove says, ah. But if I wear a glove, let's say this is a glove, this is my finger, and I want to move, and the hand says, fighting. That's your soul is unclean. But when the soul is pliable, wherever the spirit wants, it moves. Anywhere. It flows wherever the spirit. So the, the glove has to be pliable. 
willing to flow in any direction. Our soul needs cleaning, renewal, and it needs to make it until it is pounded, pliable, soft, and then is willing to yield to the spirit. Which is why point one is important. Now we can only have time for point two. The soul needs to be understand its place of weakness and let the spirit be the strength. When the spirit is the strength, then it can be whatever that the spirit wants to do. And the spirit can be strong within. Uh, you cannot have two strong ones in you. Spirit has to be stronger than the soul. The soul must always yield to the spirit. For too long, the soul has been too strong. And for those whose soul are too strong and the spirit weak, very hard for God to work. Powers of the age to come, very hard to flow. So when he said that Judas was not clean, he's referring to the fact that Judas' soul, now the soul include your emotions, your will, and your mind, polluted all over. Isaiah discovered this spiritual dimension when he saw the glory of God in Isaiah chapter 6. And he says, uh, Woe unto me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Now, unclean lips are words spoken. He realized he might have spoken wrong things, wrong words, and it produced uncleanness. Which comes back to this uh, question that we have uh, that many people have asked me. Uh, okay. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Question, how do you do that? John 15 verse 3 says the word does it. Then Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 goes into detail about how the word does it says, for the word of God is living. And here's a word. Living is from the word zeo, which is life-giving. The root word is actually zoe, from zoe life. And interesting that they use zeo because uh, the Greek word zeo is close to the word living creatures. Remember four living creatures? Now, Let's double check and see if that is true of Revelations. Uh, he who lives, he who oh, mm, 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 no, not so good then. But sometimes the cross reference is not as good as uh, because they don't link properly, which is why I'm going to redo this numbering system uh, one day and uh, have it done uh, uh, to relate all the words together. Because some words are different number, but they have the same root. And here we have uh, the 24 elders and uh, the four living creatures that were there in Revelation chapter 4. And um, there is living creature. Now let me look at the word living for you. Touch that. Living creature. Okay. Zoom. Can you see the word? Uh, Z-O-O-N. Zoon. Zoon. That's a Greek word. Zoon. A life, an animal, uh, but actually the word animal is not in society. It actually just means living being, a being full of Zoe life. It's from the word Zoe. Now, when you look back at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, you see here, for the word of God is Zeo. And uh, the word Zeo is the normal word for living uh, life and uh, it refers to uh, life delivered from Zun and Zao. It's just a usage form. Like uh, the word is living, whereas those are living being. It's like a, a noun made up from a participle. Uh, like um, uh, how was the running? Right? It referred to the process of running as a noun. How was the running? 
Was it was it good? Was it uh, easy? Was it hard? So you refer to running as a noun. So living creatures was like a participle used as the living. They are the living. And uh, whereas here the word zao is uh, from the uh, the word of God is uh, like in word form zao is the word form of living. In other words. Uh, do we have a word form in English of life? Live. Right, live. So it will be, for the word of God lives. Okay. So, wow, what is that? And powerful. But we always interpret as the word of God is life giving. Correct? It didn't say it's life giving. It is life giving. But it lives. In other words, the life that is in you actually is the word. It's not just the word giving you life. Now the, the spirit gives life to our body. But the word itself is alive. What he's trying to say, the word is alive. If you keep the word alive in you, it will burn up every field and dirt. Now how do they get rid of rubbish in every country? They burn it. Everything is burnt through fire. It's just a matter of how hot the fire is. And you know fire can be very hot, can burn everything. Or, of course, burying it doesn't actually help. In the end, it's, you know, it might slowly decay. But to get, a, get rid of all kinds of things, burn it. Uh, of course, they got more and more powerful fires. They can really burn everything into crisps. Even metal can be metal, melted down. Uh, so, fire is a very purifying force. Uh, and uh, here, if we take the word into you, the word itself is cleansing. Because before, when you look at this picture, the word of God is living and uh, it's a sharp word. You see the word is coming and the word. Cut, 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 cut. But here is different. You actually take the word, it is, it is alive. That will be the, the closer translation. The word of God is alive and it is energizing. And I guess. And when you take it inside, it works like a sword, it pierces into everything. Now you know why it divides between soul and spirit? Why do you have to divide between soul and spirit? Because you've got to treat the spirit different from the soul. The word joins up with the spirit because the word and the spirit are one. Yes. The word is a very essence that feeds your spirit. But the word will beat your soul into weakness. It's a different treatment. Your soul needs to be cleansed. Your spirit needs to be strengthened. So it has to divide the line and do two things differently. Piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. Now you notice what? The marrow is the soft part. The joint is the hard part. So it the 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 uh, the of joints and marrow. Uh, uh, marrow is very soft. Joints need to be stronger. Yeah, to join, you need to carry some area of weight. And the bone, of course, is inside the marrow. And here's the process: is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, it. it, it looks carefully and of course you all know the Greek word for thoughts uh, entomesis and the word intense is ennoia uh, of the heart so this cleansing process that is necessary and this to come in uh, is in order to work within us and remove the pollutions of the innermost things that are in you everything that is inside if you look carefully comes down to two things thoughts and intents thoughts and intents um, the word intents of course will be translated differently it's only used two times in the Bible it says uh, arm yourself together with the same my uh, same intention uh, 
translate it differently then. But we are back to Hebrews 4 verse 12. He sums up to one thing in the end. And what is the main thing? Because your soul is an interface, it's not supposed to produce actually its own thoughts. Why should my glove behave like a living thing? But it has its own thoughts because it's been left very long. And the thoughts and its function by itself, you cannot. Uh, it is like, the interface is more complex than this glove illustration. The interface is like a program. Now, today we write programs to run things. But programs have to be updated. And they will keep writing programs. Because as the program began, and things began to usage, the program reached its limit. Then they go to add things. Add things. Change the program. Add. And you can be sure between now until whatever civilization ends, they will keep updating every program. So uh, the soul is like uh, something that got programmed as an interface. It can function to a certain extent seeming independently. But it was never supposed to be. It's always to work together with the master programmer, which is the spirit. Man. But because it lost contact, so it ran by itself, which is not supposed. Which comes down to this. Thoughts and intent. And uh, we have more to touch, but I could start closing down here. Uh, otherwise, most of you will miss your flight. Uh, and, uh, so the main thing here is we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 10. Paul says in verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. Remember that the flesh is the same word, sucks, that you have in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. So it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now notice the word uh, here, every thought, all, completely none excluded. Every single thought must be subject to the Lordship of God. Then the interface works properly. This is what the cleansing process does. And this is how the Old Testament law brings into this. Remember St. Corinthians 7 verse 1. The way to perfect holiness and how, what makes you unclean. Now what makes Judas Iscariot unclean? Wrong thoughts. Wrong emotions. Wrong intention. Straight away become unclean. What was Isaiah chapter 6 when he said, Woe unto me, I men of unclean lips. Wrong words spoken. See, the Old Testament clean and clean law have changed. And here's the thing. Words, wrong words, wrong thoughts, and words have feelings because the world produces angry thoughts, jealous thoughts, wrong thoughts, sinful thoughts. All those thoughts, thoughts, can make filthy the spirit realm. And that's what St. Corinthians chapter 7 was one. How to cleanse yourself, katarizo, from the filthiness of the flesh or the spirit. <coughs> what are thoughts and words? They are dimensions with the spirit uses. Because through thoughts, we are conscious. When we go to heaven, communication is actually based on thoughts. You don't need to speak. You think and you know. The ability to think. So this is the spiritual dimension. Which is why St. Corinthians chapter 7 talks about 
the uncleanness of thoughts. If you so the, the, the Lord Jesus when he first came in Matthew chapter five, his one of the main sermon, he talked about purity of the mind, purity of the heart. Because that is the high standard now. In order to perfect holiness. In order for the power of God to work in our life, we have to watch the thoughts that flow through us. What happens if we don't watch the thoughts that flow through us? Remember Ananias and Sapphira. Because Peter asked them, Why have you taught of these things? To like his Holy Spirit. Or Simeon, when he was uh, confronted uh, in the book of Acts, and he asked for money, he used money to write and say, The thought of your heart was wrong. Everything revolved around thoughts. Second Corinthians 10 says to bring every thought. Some of you say, wow, very difficult to bring every thought. You notice it's just a general lordship of Christ. As long as Jesus is Lord and every single thought, now it looks difficult, correct? Say, wow, every single thought? Yes, Bible did say every single thought. You cannot argue with the Bible. It said every single thought. It looks difficult, but it's not difficult if the Word of God is in you. Because it didn't say you do it. It didn't say you do it. The Word of God. So how does the Word of God that is alive bring and cleanse us? Remember the fire that burns? When the fire of God burns in you, when the wrong thought tries to come, it just bounces off. It just bounces off. So you are not the one trying to think <coughs> right thoughts. He never asks you to do that. In fact, when you have the peace of God, it garrison your heart and your mind. What does it mean in Philippians 4 verse 7 and 8 when you say, there's a garrison. The word garrison, I know that I can show you in the Greek area. The word garrison has an illustration of a fortress type of situation that guards your hearts and your mind. And it's verse 7 in the Philippines. Uh, which was an understanding guard. And that's the word guard translated here. And it's from the word uh, uh, for you to be a watcher in advance that is a mount guard as a sentinel uh, to protect, keep with a garrison. And you see what? Uh, uh, garrison, to keep, keep with a garrison. To guard, protect by a military guard, either to prevent hostile invasion or to keep the inhabitants of a busy city from flight. And um, it has uh, many uh, uh, different root words, but uh, the basic root of uh, garrison actually comes um, from uh, like a protective barrier or gate, something that surrounds you. Now when the peace of God guards around you, cannot come in. You cannot come in. The thoughts of the enemy cannot pollute the area that is there. And that's where God can flow easily through our lives. That is there. Praise God. So we are touch more in this area. But uh, uh, we tie this back to uh, waiting upon the Lord. That uh, when you wait in position on the Lord, you're just allowing God's thoughts to flow out. See, how does the word cleanse and the word wait? Remember the word kuaba. And then here's the word katarizo. They're both from, one from New Testament. Uh, because the Old Testament is taho, to be clean. And how does this cleansing, waiting, which is binding together, come together. You already have many home illustrations. When you paint something, you cannot just paint. You must try to remove the previous pain so the paint can stick. Otherwise, the layer will start peeling up. Whenever uh, you want two things to join together, what do they ask you when you to glue two things? Say, clean this side, clean that side, and then you can glue it together. 
that cleanliness is important. And when anyone tries to use glue to glue things that there's a lot of dirt, it doesn't work. Things cannot stick if there's a lot of dirt. You do need to remove, and even super glue doesn't work if you've got a lot of other things in between. And uh, let's say you try to use super glue, but you've got all kinds of dirt here, all kinds of dirt. This super glue doesn't work. For it to work, you need to be super clean here, super clean here. Then one drop of the super glue, you put, but before it dry, it must have pressure. And as you put the pressure there, until it completely dry, it becomes bonded. That is the process in which the Lord wants to take us. That's why weakness is part of the thing. That clean, cleanliness is to come. Then when the Lord starts pushing pressure in your life to be bound to Him, See, why is it that sometimes you want, you become a worldly Christian and then bad things happen? You know why? God put pressure to push you back to Him. He allowed the pressure to come. Now, He would not do it to you if you didn't belong to Him. Because if you belong to Him, every time you go away from Him, you find pressure. Because God tries to bring you back. Then, when you're doing nothing wrong, you're doing the right thing, still the pressure is there to stay, to stay close enough. And anybody use super glue for super things before? You know, it is like what they advertise. One drop, my whole and I'm not exactly that. Provided you really clean, really clean. But the main thing is not just, some of you put super glue, and that's it, goodbye. Of course it's not going to work. You know what you like? Pressure. After cleaning, Kuawa, bind together. So, how do you bind together? Pressure. So, you need the kuawa and the katarizo and the pressure. And what else do you need? Time. Time. So, you need to be stuck together and it must be just in that position for some time. And then, when it's solidified, hallelujah, it's as good as new. And the same with some of you, you know, you know my style, I illustrate, really illustrate. <laughs> and uh, if, this one closing illustration must take a shoe out. <laughs> if your shoe, I'm not going to do that, has an open hole where they say, what do they call it? A mouth, <laughs> whatever. Remember that open to your shoe one night? With <laughs> 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 really a crocodile, okay, whatever you want. And if it opens, there are glues. In fact, if you really know how to use glue, or even they got metal glue, do you know they are metal glues? When you glue it, in fact, they invented a glue for metal, and you glue it together, really proper process. Clean, pressure, time, properly, maximum time. When you finish, the part that is glue is stronger than the part that is not glue. Surprisingly. The part that is glue can be... They did one test of a metal thing. And uh, they did one test of a metal thing. And in the test of the metal thing that they did, and uh, then they put pressure on the metal to see the glue that they invented. The, the metal broke. They glue two metals together, and to prove the concept, they put pressure on the metal, and the metal will have to crack or metal fatigue break. And in some of you can see it on YouTube in many places, where the part without the glue breaks faster than the part with the glue. And you were taught that when the glue is a weak point, sometimes when it's a really good glue, the part where the glue is is stronger than other parts. It depends. It can be a source of weakness, it can be a source of strength. Which comes back to St. Corinthians 12, verse 9. When you are weak, then you are strong. If the Lord is the glue, who is stronger than the Lord? Sorry, Lord, for calling you super glue. But if the Lord is the glue, is the strongest thing. Uh, stronger than you can ever be by yourself. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. 
We ask, O oh Father, that as we learn the ways of your Spirit and the things of the Spirit, and especially as we enter into this episode, uh, this phase of which you're sealing each one of us, you want to bring us into the dimension of the Spirit for your Spirit to come into us. This transformation that we're experiencing in our soul. It's going to be so permanent that we will never recognize ourselves. Because the Spirit is powerful. So change and transform our very DNA, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all rise and we're going to pray for your soul. And remember, your soul seems so mighty and wonderful. But it's only an interface. If you will allow the Lord in this move to change you by His word in you, your soul will change. Because your interface is what needs to change. So your soul will change to be more of the spirit. And when it change, you can actually change into another person. Sometimes some changes are temporary because they didn't continue. You remember time. And under pressure, they didn't turn to the Lord. Like Saul, when the Spirit of God came on him, he became another man. Instantly turned into another man. But he didn't allow the Spirit to keep dwelling in him. And as you allow God to keep dwelling in him, that's why the Lord says, if you love me, keep my word. Why does he say, love him, keep his word? You know why? His word is the glue. Every, the whole universe is actually glued together by the Word. If I want to say that way, framed together. So you're using the original glue, the Word. And that's why he let me keep my Word. And Saul did not have enough Word. That is why when he changed into another man and he do the lost things, he went back to his old self. But when you have the Word, and in this move of God, you allow the Word to be your super glue. The Word to become your DNA. Because the whole universe is glued together by the Word. Framed together is the correct word. And it's framed together. God is building your, your soul into another frame. Whatever you cannot do, you cannot be, you cannot reach your fullness, is because your soul is not interfacing well. Allow God to change your soul. Let's pray. Father, we ask, that even now you x-ray your spirit into our soul. Let your word that is full of life and full of energy come into each one's spirit and soul. Let it energize the spirit, strengthen the spirit, and let it change the soul. Rearrange the atoms and molecules of the soul. Rearrange all the electronic parts of the soul that are not interfacing properly. So that the spirit emotion cannot come in. So that the soul, the spirit intellect cannot go in. So that the spirit will cannot go in. And the interface is not working. We pray, Father God, that you would transform our soul as we stay in the yielded position, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. We stay in that position to allow the cleaning process. And all this takes time. It takes time, Father, for us to be cleansed. It's an instant to be cleansed from sin. But it takes time, Father, for our soul to be broken down, rearranged, cleansed. And it takes time, Father, for the Word to be applied to our lives. And it takes time for quava, the pressure to put upon our lives until we are permanently forged into a new position, a new soul character. So, Father, we say of each one here, let every thought be captured to Christ. Let all the strongholds be broken down. That all those things, Father, of the soul that we have built up as our personality, but not really our personality. Because the real us hasn't come out yet, Father. 
until we are perfectly like Christ. So Father, send forth your spirit and your word. Let your word and your spirit change and transform us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.